check the mic and make sure it's so welcome right, everyone boys. to the group chat brought to you by Overmark. I'm your host Daryl and my co-host Singwei. Singwei, what's up? Hi hi. So the topic we're gonna discuss today is how do you do well as a slow learner? So some of us, you know, we are like learning, but we don't learn as fast. Or for certain subjects, we are not doing as well, right? So we do not absorb information at a very fast pace. So today we want to discuss how you can do well, even as a slow learner. So Singway, maybe we can start off the discussion by defining what a slow learner is. Mm. I think okay. I, I I don't think I don't think I have I'm like very knowledgeable about this part, but I think can as the name suggests, like they, um, this group of people may take in information slower, so they take longer to understand. They take longer to retain them, and then they take longer to be able to apply them in like novel situation. So, we'll probably categorize those as slow learners. Now, I think I want to make a very important distinction. Now, when we say slow learner, we're not saying stupid. Uh. It's different, uh, really. So, slow learner is just people that need more time uh, to absorb the information. Yeah. But something that I think could be, as we will discuss later, a potential upside, is that usually these slow learners, because they take a more deliberate approach towards learning, they actually need time to absorb. The absorption process and the retention might even be stronger and the depth of understanding could be deeper as well. So just because yeah. you learn slow doesn't mean you cannot do well. So that's the approach uh, that we want to help you build. Um, so if you find that you are learning very slowly for certain subjects or in general, we want to help you understand yourself a bit better. Uh, what are some tips that could help you excel and how to slowly turn that into advantage? And uh, I think that is what we are hoping to share with you. Now, um, the first thing I probably want to share is why it's okay to be a slow learner. Now, some of us, we like, wow, we feel very bad. Like we beat ourselves up over it. Like why my friends understand, I still don't understand. Now, you need to recognize that all of us learn differently. Some of us learn better when we listen to lectures, right? We hear somebody talk. A lot of us also learn better by actually doing it ourselves. Some of us, we are not book people. Like, you know, like we look at a book, we read, but we don't really get it. But the moment we do, we learn it. You know, so there's different types of learners. And if the teaching method doesn't suit you, you could find that actually absorbing information might be a lot harder. There, there is even a very big difference between learning uh, from books and papers, static text versus learning from videos and audios as well. So there's really a very large spectrum. I think what you need to focus on is to really identify which learning style suits you best. So it's just unfortunate in a classroom setting uh, the people that learn the fastest are those that are most comfortable with a lecture style. That means a one-way communication kind of thing. That means teacher give you information, you absorb, textbook information, you absorb. Those are typically what we classify as the fast learners because that just happens to be their strong domain, you see. But for you, if you find that experimenting uh, helps you learn better or you know testing yourself or asking questions, it's about rediscovering what method suits you best and to lean towards that method more. So that's why it's very important uh, to understand yourself and what learning style suits you best. Now, same way for yourself, I mean, working with certain students, uh, what are some of the, um, I think, tips and tactics that you would use uh, to help slow learners uh, get on pace? Yeah, I think slow learners are just like, there are too many different like reasons, right? So it's very hard for us to go and like really identify the trend and then tell you like what are the tips but maybe one type of slow learners like they are slow learners because they find it very hard to focus like what exactly what they say like be, like one year in then one year out because they just cannot focus so my way is to try help them to focus so really like asking a lot of questions and then looking into their eyes and then expect an answer from them so with that they will like focus a lot more and then because with questions then they will think about the question at least they have like processed information um during this period so they they try to help help them to stay focused and that can overcome that our so-called like slow learning because of the lack of focus because personally I'm actually I cannot really learn in lecture style I would rather sit alone look at notes or review the um review the video 
just at my own pace. Like I also do not like to, I mean, for example, for A-level students, they will definitely know it's not even a group of 30. It's a group of like 10 or 20 classes all at once. I, I was personally also find it very hard to like focus during that period. And that lack of focus also makes me slow during lecture. Um, for myself, I find that I will always be the slowest if I can't see the understanding or the logic behind it. So for me, I'm very bad with um subjects that will just require me to memorize and regurgitate. I, I usually cannot internalize that. For me, I need to find the logic because uh, for me, I'm a very logical person. Like everything needs to make sense. And the moment it makes sense, everything uh works. So for me, I really struggle in classes where the teacher just go ahead with teaching the content uh, without bother explaining why. So I actually spend a lot of time on my own to rediscover the chapter and to figure out certain things that uh, to help me push, piece together everything and to start making sense mm -hmm. out of it. So I realized that that was really important for me. And in that way, I slowly tried to turn my slow learning and understanding myself, which is I need to understand the concept. And from there, I actually built upon that understanding and eventually the mastery came about. So I think um, if you're a slow learner, don't be afraid uh, or don't uh, be disheartened. It's just about rediscovering yourself and how you learn best. So like both me and Sing Wei, we find out what works best for ourselves and we just lean into that a bit more. But on some of the more practical tips on how you can prepare for class, I think there's a very important and underrated thing that you can do, which is to do your pre-reading. Now, when we say pre-reading, we're not requesting you to like sit down for two hours, go through the notes in detail. That's a bit pointless because it's always best to have somebody to guide you through. But if you are taking the guiding through for the very first time in class, it's a lot more difficult for you to absorb any information at all because everything is new. When we say pre-reading, it's just a simple maybe 10 minute to 15 minute thingy that you can do before class or before lessons to look through the content that you're about to learn, right? identify certain areas that you think you might have confusion over, things that you can't really understand. So you want to pay extra attention to those portions when the content is taught or to ask questions after to seek clarification if you're still not clear. So I think pre-reading is just one way of getting more prepared for class uh, that could help you out if you're finding that you are not absorbing information at a rapid rate. I'll say another skill set that you can start picking up a lot is that after class, and once you have mastered the topic, you can try to do a bit more mind mapping. Because mind mapping is just a very effective way to show the flow of thoughts of how certain concepts are meant to be linked together. So something that I can maybe encourage you to do is that every time you finish a chapter in school, just construct a simple mind map. Maybe take a solid 10 to 15 minutes, look through the notes, look through the certain parts of the chapter where you can put it all together because you need some time to rediscover that information. And honestly, when you are able to piece all this information together, the understanding will come true as well. So I would say two main points, pre-reading your notes and doing mind maps after you learn the chapter. Now, um, I think maybe we can move on to how we can change this into an advantage. So Singway, I know this sounds a little bit more theoretical, but if uh, students listening, uh, they realize that they are actually learning very slowly, how can they eventually change this from somewhat a disadvantage into an advantage? I think if someone knows that they are slow learners, and like what Daryl said just now, learning slow that is not a bad thing because as learning slow means that these students spend more time with the content. And that may not, and it may be slow at that moment, but that total amount of time, which is greater than other people, would ultimately, I feel like it will ultimately translate if um, they are spending the like reasonable amount. Like, okay, if they know that they're slow learners, then they spend more time. And if they actually spend more time, I believe that the result will eventually translate that they eventually understand. And perhaps like what you said, like stronger, um, more sturdy foundations and can retain better because of the accumulation of work. Yeah, so I think that is um, turning and disadvantage into advantage, but that the caveat is that you have to put in the time instead of um, like maybe being frustrated and then just like, okay, I, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I think something that I like to share is that if you just go across any research and stuff, actually the general human population, I would say the IQ range are all in that same range. Right? 
So if you find that you you classify yourself as a slow learner and you are labeling yourself as like why wow, not smart, you know, like my other friends or whatsoever, you need to realize that that's actually not true, you know, because majority of humans' IQ is within the range. But it's just a matter of right now in this education system, in this exact path that you are being allocated to, in the very specific learning conditions that you are exposed to, you are not performing as well as your peers. So you find yourself learning a bit slower. But what I'm trying, or at least what me and Singh were trying to convey to you, is not that you're stupid, you know, you're not. It's just that you need to rediscover the style that works best for you, right? You need to lean in more to what works for you rather than to follow what everybody else is doing. So here, like what Singh has mentioned, spending more time is not necessarily a bad thing. It actually helps to uh, strengthen the understanding and the long run is actually an advantage. Another thing that I would say is that if you're a slow learner, something that you can tap on is knowing that with more time spent, you build more confidence with the content set that you have. Eventually, you know you're more confident in terms of using that content and that concept correctly. So I think something that I want to allude to is to start building confidence. I think a lot of times, slow learners, they also, in a way, they are like, it's a very vicious cycle. So it's like, if you don't do well, then you feel like you cannot do well then you don't put in effort in that subject. And then that whole cycle just turns yeah. into a very vicious yeah. cycle that keeps pushing you down and down to completely destroy. But actually what could happen is just a very simple inflection point. Instead of telling yourself that you're not good at, for example, I'm not good at math, right? You keep telling yourself that, then even though you can actually do one, you already convince yourself that you suck at it. Then, then obviously you'll be learning very slowly in class. But if you just take a mindset shift for a moment and you tell yourself that, actually, I'm not bad at math. I can do one. I just need a bit more time, right? Then you start developing that confidence as you get more questions correct. You go into a very positive loop and eventually move you upwards where you develop the confidence for the subject and slowly you start finding yourself learning a lot faster. So I think that is also one of the points that I like to bring up to not beat yourself down. A lot of time, right, is nobody sabo you. It's like you sabo yourself kind of thing. So that can be also a very scary proposition. Now, um, maybe for the last part, Singwei, um, personally, have you came across any students or any success stories for your, uh, what we typically define as slow learners? I think, I think what Daryl say is true. I think a lot of times, um, maybe not slow learners, but maybe they will say like, "Well, oh, I just cannot do this. Like, I'm not, I'm not good at this subject. Like, I, I cannot understand this." But I think a lot of times, other than that confidence, it's also patience. Like um, having having the patience to really, like you know what they say, trust the process. Like you must trust the process in order to see the result. Sometimes maybe it's very clear cut, and for some people it's not. But you have to trust. You have to trust that what you are doing is right. And then um, while it may take a longer time, or it may be a frustrating process, but eventually um like hard, hard work will hard work will return result la. like if if it's in the right way and like right frame of time yeah i think for me um i i won't go into like specific success stories but i'll just do a more like a general overview i never really found students to be fast or slow learners to be very frank la. like the way i look at things i don't go and say wow they're fast they're slow for me, fast and slow is really about a level of mastery. It's really about, for example, right, if you just put this out of education, I put it in an external sphere. For example, if we go into something as, as straightforward as swimming, right? Swimming is like pretty clear cut, right? Everybody, maybe you jump into the pool, you can swim. But whether you swim fast or slow really depends on how well you have practiced your technique right um your muscle memory in that case so when it comes to education a lot of time the students that learn the fastest are actually the ones that are most prepared or most motivated to learn or the one that have already put in the most effort to hone their skills so a lot of things is actually more about the intention uh mm. the purpose behind the action rather than whether your iq is high or low because we already say the iq gap is no different one it's just about rediscovering yourself and actually having the motivation to do well. 
So it means coming to class prepared, doing your worksheets, listening in class. Wow, that's one of the biggest ones. You're already there, might as well listen kind of idea, right? So actually, there isn't really fast or slow. It's just whether you are well prepared or not. And I think that makes a huge difference um, in terms of making sure that you can eventually move out of a phase to develop that confidence and patience with yourself and to find the learning styles that suits you best. So at the end of the day, maybe to just uh, wrap it up, I would just like to say that there are really no slow learners. They are just unmotivated learners. Right. I think that's, that's the nicest way to put it. Singwe, any last thoughts before we end off this episode? I think whichever fast, slow learners you are, I think um, what I want to tell all the students is that as long as they put in the work, they will understand everything and they will memorize everything, but they just need to put in the work. Trust the process. <laughs> okay, but uh, with that, we come to the end of today's episode. So if you enjoyed whatever we've discussed, we will appreciate if you can leave us a like and subscribe on YouTube or to follow us on Spotify and we will see you in the next podcast episode. Bye-bye. Sound right, boy.